Jim in San Clemente, California. You wanted to talk about the Second Amendment and slavery? Yeah, um, you know, I had heard that theory floated around about the Second Amendment ratified to uh, empower slave owners, and it had nothing to do with uh, individual rights. And your name is all over the Internet as, as the chief proponent of it. So I took the time to look up the study that you're referring to, the hidden history of the Second Amendment. Yeah, yeah, by, by Dr. Uh, Carl T. Bogus. Right. If I, if I were to tell you that there were no, ev- no evidence to support that, it was all circumstantial, what would you say? I would say, by and large, you're right. That's what the, that's what Bogus says himself. And yeah, I, I, I know. looked it up, and I got page. I know. There's there's no evidence for any theory about why the Second Amendment is there that is not circumstantial. I mean, I, I could point to you the letters from Jefferson to Madison in eighteen seven in seventeen eighty seven when Madison when Jefferson was in France and Madison sent him the, the first draft of the Constitution. And Jefferson wrote back right. saying, you know, I will tell you, the, you know, he goes through the things he likes, and he says, and now I will tell you what I do not like. And he said, what I do not like is that there is not a Bill of Rights attached to this. That's, and then he goes through the specifics of the Bill of Rights, that the press shall be free, that there shall be freedom from religion, that there shall be no standing armies during times of peace, and that there will be no monopolies in commerce. That was what Jefferson wanted in the Bill of Rights. So, uh, you know, under that, and that argument was made repeatedly, no standing armies during times of peace. It's why in, the, in Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, right. you can only appropriate funds for the Army for a two-year period. They were very, very wary of standing armies. And so I'd say that the main reason why the, why the Second Amendment was put into the Constitution, and, and in fact the original reason, if you read the first four drafts of it, Madison's first four drafts of it, the very first one actually had a sentence in it that said standing armies at times well, during times of peace are pernicious the, you know was to stop that but but the the, the but, but, but let me just let me just finish this thought and I'll toss it back to you the 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 key was when Virginia had to ratify the constitution the north and south they were both agreed standing armies were a bad thing but every they had enough votes to ratify the constitution except they still needed Virginia and this is when Patrick Henry and George Mason came forward with the quotes that you can find. If you look at the article that I wrote, it actually links to the actual quotes where these guys said, wait a minute. I, I read that. Okay. I and, and so it, I, from the point of view of Virginia as the linchpin of making it happen, the Second Amendment was slightly rewritten to take out the part about standing armies and to, instead of talking about a, a free country, which was the, the next to the last draft that Madison had written, to make it a free state. Now it's now it's oh, yours. I've read, I've, read, I've read what you wrote, and, and, and I've read the studies. Can, can I get one word in edge one? You you may have an entire minute. Thank you. So what the strongest reason for the Second Amendment? Can we give an authority on on what the strongest reason for the Second Amendment would be? No, the strongest Jefferson. reason clearly was to prevent well, a standing army. So no, Jefferson, the strongest reason for people to retain the right to keep and bear arms is the last resort to protect them. To, Protect them against tyranny in government. No, that's a, that's a quote that was made up. If you there's there's an entire website that will give you the misattributed Jefferson quotes. Jefferson never said that. Patrick Henry, you want me to go and keep going? So that that quote was made up by by Jefferson. No, Jefferson never said that. Quote? Okay, how about this quote? Like most Americans, I believe that the Second Amendment guarantees an individual right to bear arms. Who's the right wing nut that said that? I have no idea. President Obama. President Obama. Uh, yeah. I mean, th- this is how the Supreme Court has reinterpreted it in the Heller decision and others, that there is an individual right to bear arms in, in found in the Second Amendment. I don't see that there, and just because the Supreme Court says it doesn't mean it's right, although it does mean it's the law. But, uh, but Jim, I personally, I believe that there were two principal reasons. The main one was to, to have something to prevent a standing army during times of peace, and the second was to get Virginia's vote for ratification. Thanks for the call.